Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and today I'm back with a new art journal layout. So I'm working on my Moleskin sketchbook. To start I'm going to apply some texture on my pages by using this stencil. This is by Tim Holtz and it's one from his uh, latest collection. And I'm going to apply with a spatula a paste. Now the paste I'm going to use is called uh, grid paste but in case you don't have grid paste you might have another product similar on your stash. That's uh, the paper mosaic grout that was included in this kit. Just uh, to let you all know that both these pastes are exactly the same thing. So what I love about this paste is that it's quite thick. I hope you can see how thick that is. It has a little bit of tooth like a grain in it and when it dries it's going to pick up uh, ink and just because I am planning to use my Distress Oxide inks today for coloring, I didn't want to use any paste that would um, resist the ink that goes on top. So that uh, grid paste is perfect for uh, Distress inks. As you can see, I am moving my stencil in different areas of my layout and I am applying some paste through the stencil. I don't want to have big blocks of letters, I just want to keep everything quite random. Now also remember that you cannot add any heat on top of this paste, otherwise it might bubble up. So all you need is to let it aside to dry and I hope you can see the dimension that I got as well as the texture, which is quite um, sandy. Now to the touch. Now I am going to work on something different now as this uh, paste is drying. So I am bringing in my cardstock. This is an 8x8 paper pad by Tim Holtz and I am going to pick up some of the colors from this uh, pad so that I can uh, cut out some gears. The dye that I'm going to use is by C6 and it's called uh, Gadget Gears. Uh, it's a big uh, dye that cuts out um, not only cardstock but even fabric and um, chipboard and many more. I am going to make sure that I, have, I cut out my cardstock to size and I'm going to run them through my Big Shot machine all at once. This is a big die which means that it cuts out quite thick material and I can even uh, stack up uh, three of those cardstock on top and you will see that it's going to cut out everything perfectly. All my gears are cut out and uh, I am going to hold on to these papers. I always like to put them at the front of my paper pads in case I need any scraps. Now I am uh, going to make sure that um, I pop out any of the inside pieces and uh, my gears are pretty much ready. I might not use all of them, I just wanted to have a bunch in case I need them. Now I am going to distress them a little bit and for that I am going to use a sanding block. The sanding block I am using is by Paper Archie and you will find links down below. Now I am going over those gears with my sanding block and this reveals the core of the cardstock which is not white, it's uh, actually craft. I'm going to zoom in so you can see how beautiful they turn out. It's really easy to do, I'm not applying any pressure at all, I just go over the gears and um, by sanding them down I reveal the core which gives that beautiful distressed look which is going to be perfect for the look I'm going for for my layout. Now my grid paste is totally dry and um, I am going to apply some distress oxide ink on top. I, am, I don't know at uh, the moment exactly which colors I want to use. I am going to start with the three colors that I have on my table right now and you can see the names on your screen but as I am working on the page I am going to bring in even more colors so that I can blend them all together. Now I usually have a rough idea of what of kind of background I want to create and as I am working on uh, my project I might um, bring in even more colors just to get the look I want. As you can see I am using my blending tools to apply the ink. The ink goes beautifully on top of my pages and uh, I am able to blend the, everything together really easy. Also I haven't prepped the pages at all so that's uh, the plain paper. I haven't applied any gesso or anything else. Also notice that all those uh, stenciled areas where I have applied my grid paste do pick up the color of the ink. 
But notice how it uh, actually comes up a little bit lighter than the rest of the paper. And that's exactly the look that I was going for since I wanted those stenciled areas to stand out. And when I'm working on my backgrounds, I always like to start with light color and as I go, I can darken it up. So now it's time to add my vintage photo. I am going to mainly stay at the edges, but um, I don't want my page to look as bright as it is right now. So I'm going to apply a nice coating of that vintage photo on both pages. And then I'm going to go ahead and add some uh, water. Since this is Distress Oxide Ink, the water is going to blend everything nicely and at the same time it's going to oxidize the ink, so I am going to get a totally different look than uh, the one that I have at the moment. So I'm spraying and I hope you can see how wet that page is. I'm going to let the water react with the ink for a few seconds and then I'm going to blot off everything with a clean towel. And you can see the difference at the moment, so it looks more oxidized, it gives you that uh, chalky finish look, but uh, when you touch it, it's not chalky at all. Now I'm going to use my heat gun to make sure that every, both my pages are dry from the water, and then I'm going to add even more layers of Distress Oxide ink. For my second layer, I'm mainly staying with the same colors as I did for the first layer, so again I'm using Capilt Paint. Fossilized Amber, Vintage Photo, but I'm going to darken up the edges even more by adding a little bit of uh, Walnut Stain. And since I always like to keep my edges quite darker than the center of my pages, I'm going to bring in Black Suit. So some of the colors that I'm using today from the Distress Oxide uh, collection are from the previous release and some of them are from the latest ones. And since I am a big fan of using my Distress Oxide inks on my art journals, I am really happy that the new colors came out. This is how my background is looking at the moment, and I am going to spray a little bit of water again, just like I did previously, but this time I am not going so heavy. So I want to have some splashes here and there, I am going to try and catch the light for you so you can see the amount of water that I have sprayed there. I am leaving those splashes on top of my pages for a few seconds to react with uh, the paint underneath and then again with my clean towel I'm going to blot off all the excess water and I hope you can see the splashes that I get. Now I'm really happy with how my background is looking at the moment so I'm going to add a little bit of stamping and finish off with the background. For that I'm going to use this stamp by a Tim, Hol Tim Holtz uh, stamp set and I'm going to stamp with uh, Coffee Archival Ink. This way I don't get a very vibrant impression and everything blends nicely with the background. Here is a close-up look of how my background is looking at the moment. Now I'm going to work a little bit on my gears that I have cut out earlier. So I want to bring everything together and my trick for that is to add the same color on different elements of my page. So in this case I'm going to add vintage photo on all the gears. And uh, another element that I'm going to use is this little guy. This comes from a package by Tim Holtz and that's the paper dolls. It actually comes with uh, different um, people in uh, many different sizes. You get multiple of those, as you can see with that ballerina there. And there are tons and tons of people, big, uh, old, small, babies, uh, even dogs. And uh, I think there are, yes, there are 110 pieces included in this package. So plenty of them. Now I'm uh, um, going to decide where everything is going to go, so I'm going to place the gears in uh, different areas before I commit with glue. I want my little guy to sit on top of uh, one of the gears and I'm going to spread the rest of them all over my pages. Once I was happy with the placement, I realized that I needed to add a little bit of uh, black ink around some of the gears just to help them stand a little bit more against the background. So I'm going to do that with my blending tool and uh, black suit. And now that I'm happy with how everything is looking, I'm going to commit and stick everything down with glue. 
For sticking down all my elements, I'm going to use my Deluxe Nouveau Glue. This is white glue. I'm adding just a little bit. I don't add too much so that it doesn't uh, come out through, uh, underneath those uh, elements. And um, I am going to also make sure that some of uh, the gears come out of the page as if it's a part of a bigger continuous uh, image. Another thing I need to let you all know is why I decided to use my white glue instead of using my trusted matte medium. Now matte medium is going to move the distress oxide background if I apply it directly there. So this is not something I want. I don't want to smudge or smear my beautiful background. That's why I'm being very careful and I'm applying my glue only at the back of my elements. Once everything was dry, I used my scissors and I'm cutting out the excess paper. So everything is going to look nice and neat at the end. To finish off my layout, I always like to have quotes on top of them. So I decided to go with one of those quote chips by Tim Holtz, the one that says thoughts and theories. I am going to ink up the edges a little bit with my Distress Oxide ink, that's Vitage Photo. So everything blends nicely together. Again, I always like to add the same color on different elements of my layouts, which is uh, which kind of brings everything together. I am going to add some glue at the back. I am going to stick that on one of my pages. And to finish off my layout, I'm going to combine this thoughts and theories uh, quote with uh, more from this uh, pad. This is uh, small talk stickers by Tim Holtz again and I'm going to pick up a few and stick them in different areas and I'm going to read a few of uh, those that I decided to use such as make a difference, stay curious, choose to shine, be brave, stay strong, do your best and many more. All these are uh, thoughts and theories perfect for this for this little guy. Now uh, notice how I like to stick them down. I don't stick them as if they are flying all over the place. I like to tuck them underneath my elements. Details like this really bring everything together. So I'm going to continue sticking more and more of those stickers which is actually the final touch. And that was the layout for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired and I gave you some ideas on how you can use your Distress Oxide inks on your art journal. There is a great sale running at the moment on all Tim Holtz products, so make sure to visit my blog and find out all about it. And you will find links down below on all the products that I used as well as on my blog. Here are some close-up photos of the layout that I made today. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.